How's it going everybody? Cub Fan here, and today is episode 110 of Cub Fan's Minecraft Let's Play. And first of all, I want to say hello to all the new subscribers. Uh, many of you probably saw my teleporter video last time, so welcome aboard. And welcome to my single player world. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in this world, so uh, feel free if you guys have any questions about what anything is. Uh, feel free to ask in the comments, and other people will know, or I'll answer you. Um, either way, uh, yeah, there's a lot of different stuff, so uh, if you ever see a video uh, where you see something you don't know what it is, uh, please let me know and I will try to uh, either answer the question in the comments or address it in the next video. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get the episode started. Okay, so since last time, uh, I went down and checked our slime farm, and you can probably tell by the slime balls in my inventory I got quite a lot. I'll just show you here. That's a lot, and there's a full double chest down at the farm, too, that's pretty much full. So we got to add those to our um, auto sorter here. So this is our auto sorter. Goes down to our, uh, there's a basically a huge warehouse down there that uh, this connects up to. And we can just throw on items in this chest and it'll automatically sort uh, down there. So I want to add slimes to that. And then I also have wanted to improve this enchantment room for quite some time so currently the enchantment room we can have either the full 15 bookshelves we can have uh, two bookshelves we can have uh, 10 bookshelves five bookshelves or, or five bookshelves and that's pretty much all we can do but uh, I want to uh, I want to change that I want to make it so that we can have any combination of bookshelves from 0 to 15 uh, because occasionally I do come in here and I don't want to enchant at max level I want to enchant at say you know level 26 or level 24 or something like that uh, specific level so I want to have it fully customizable and the way uh, the way to do that is to have a an enchantment room that can um, put up bookshelves in increments of 1, 2, 4, and 8 because uh, any multiple of those or any combination of those numbers uh, can give you uh, all the numbers uh, 1 to 15. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and tear down this room. I like the color scheme of this room but I'm going to go ahead and tear it down and build a new enchantment table here. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, everybody, so made some major changes here. Uh, first thing I did is I went ahead and cleared out the enchantment room here, as you can see. Looks kind of weird. I'm going to have to get rid of some of that brick over there. Um, and also, uh, I went ahead and moved back this wall two spaces. So it was three wide, now it's five. And that's necessary because our enchantment table is going to be aligned right here with the, the blocks I'm on. Uh, so it'll be in the middle right there somewhere. And then uh, the enchantment table or the enchantment room itself will be seven by seven, and we'll have to have a um, a two block uh, two block wall because I want to have sort of indicator lamps to tell me how many bookshelves are up at any one time. So we can't have it here. We'll have we'll have to start the first layer there. Um, so like a be lamp here, lamp here, and then the same over this side. And then that means from right here, we'll have to have um, seven blocks. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the last row of pistons will be right here. So I think it should fit. But we may have to extend that wall and possibly that wall too. Uh, and we also can't touch these other, other circuits around here. But uh, yeah, that's the plan. I'll go ahead and try and lay down some pistons and see how this thing is going to lay out. Okay, everybody, so uh, I got sort of this pattern going here right now. So here's what this looks like from the front. Uh, we got the lamps here uh, and everything like that. And that lamp should not be on, so we're going to have to get rid of that. There we go. Uh, so when we flick this down, what should happen is one piston over here should come up. So... We're going to go ahead and wire that up now. we got a torch on the side here. Redstone dust there. And we're just going to place a torch here. And we'll do something like this and that. Get rid of that torch. 
So we'll wire this up like that. There we go. So that'll control that one piston there. Just get up here and make sure. Yep, there we go. So there's one piston there. That comes up. All right. And I wasn't sure. I've been trying different uh, types of wood here. And also, like, some different uh, clay blocks and everything. I might go with the light blue here. Looks kind of different, but kind of fits with the whole obsidian there. A little bit lighter version of it. I don't know. We'll have to see about that. Uh, but there's one one uh, lever wired up. So that's the uh, one bookshelf lever. And I'll put labels on these and everything. Now we got to do the two bookshelf lever. So come down here. And I typically like to use cobblestone for, for wiring because no one ever really sees this. Except now, of course, but that's beside the point. Okay, so we're going to put redstone there, redstone there, and there. And that should be all we need for that layer. Let's go up and see. Make sure it works and everything. Whoops, that's the one. Okay. So let's go ahead and try it. Two, two are wired up, okay? Click that down, we should get three. Alright, fantastic. And my computer wants to update, so <laughs> no thank you. Okay. So there's the first two all wired up there. And we'll go ahead and put some sandstone back here and wire up the other two. All right, so let's go ahead and wire up the fourth, uh, the four pistons over here now. So these four. So I already put a block here uh, because I know we're going to have to power it something like that. So that gets two at once, those two there, that one and that one. And then we're going to go ahead and we'll pull this signal down from the lever here. Just like that. Uh, let's go ahead and use this. There we go. Put some redstone on top there. Then we will bring the signal over like this. And then we don't want it going into that piston, so we'll bring it down. Put a torch there to invert it. Redstone here, here. And I'll place a repeater going into there. And I'll place a block there, place a block on there, and then dust right there. So that'll control that piston. So there's three. We just have to get this corner one now. So I'll go ahead and place something like this, like that, that, and this going into that, like that. So that should be all we need for the fourth line, I think. So there we go. One, two, th three, four. Yep. Four of them up. Okay. There we go. Alright, good deal. Okay, so then finally this lever over here will control the other eight pistons uh, around this side and to the back. So this will be a little bit trickier. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to place a torch on the side right there. And then we'll go ahead and do something like this. We'll go ahead and Put that down, and we'll go up, put some t dust on there, torch here, uh, then we'll bring it down one, two blocks, torch, or er, dust there, and then I'll put a torch there, dust beneath it, going into a repeater, and then I'm going to go ahead and get rid of some of these blocks temporarily. So it's easier to move around. There we go. Alright, got that. And then we'll go into a block here. That can take care of that piston. Uh, then we'll go ahead and place some dust down right there. We'll have blocks around there. And torch there, there. And that one will take care of those. That's four of them hooked up. Now we'll take a signal from this block here, put it into a block here, and then we'll just do something like this, something like that, torch there, 
block on top to take care of those pistons. This one will take care of that piston. And we need to get down here, place redstone there, uh, block there, and then a torch right there, and I'll take care of that one. So that should be everything there. I'm just going to go ahead and fill this in. Uh, let's go ahead and test it out first, though. Make sure we did it right before I fill it in. So flick this letter. There we go. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, fantastic. Okay, everybody. So here is our fully complete enchantment room now. I um, went ahead and went with the circle stone brick down here, which is kind of expensive. I only have a few of those left from jungle temples and things like that. And we went with the cracked stone brick up top, labeled all these, uh, and then on the inside, went with some paintings and some gray uh, clay bricks. And I hear a zombie somewhere around here. I think he's up in the in the bathroom there, maybe. Uh, but yeah, uh, pretty happy with how this turned out. Uh, and as I said before, it's fully customizable. So say we wanted, you know, like seven levels, we could just hit four, two, one. There's seven bookshelves. Or we could do, you know, 11. Whoop. <laughs> Didn't mean to teleport there. 11 bookshelves would be eight, two, and one. So yeah, fully customizable. And I think it's going to come in pretty handy in the future. So, pretty happy with that. Uh, but now, on to bigger and better things. I want to make the jumper. And I want to make a jumper to the end. So, the jumper, for those of you who don't know, is a device that I made that's capable of teleporting a player um, pretty much an infinite distance, an unlimited distance, instantly um, in Survival Minecraft. So, we're going to go ahead and make one of those, and we're going to make it go to our end portal, which is about a thousand blocks or 1500 blocks that way all right everyone so I went ahead and sort of walked around the area a little bit trying to determine where I want to put my end portal I checked down there by the slime farm but slimes might accidentally activate it and then I also uh, checked outside but again mobs could activate it so I went ahead and actually built a whole nother room here um, so this connects up to our enchantment room here. So that's that's how that connects up there. Pretty straightforward. And then the uh, ground here is made of iron. We got uh, brick half slabs up top there. And so I want to put the portal right here. Uh, I want to make it four across here and then a couple high. And then we, if we ever... I uh, decided to make some other ones, uh, like to the uh, 1.7 train or connect it up to maybe another base somewhere uh, in the future. We can put uh, different portals along here as well. Uh, but for right now, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to build this portal here. So I'm going to grab my pick. And what I think I want to do is something like this. So if I go ahead and dig out this area here. rid of this iron there we go okay should be good I want to sort of do this make a pattern with alternating cracked and stone bricks so it's sort of like it's a fortress just like that okay and then I want to do something like this I want to have it go up again alternating a little bit Whoops, there we go. Just like this. And then on this side as well. Have it alternate a bit. And then in the center here, I want to have end stone. Just like that. Have it go up one more. And then just continue to alternate this pattern here all the way up to right there and then like that there we go I think that looks pretty pretty good not fantastic but it'll do um, now what I want to do here I want to place down some pressure plates which I neglected to get let me run over here and grab those 
Come over here and grab these here. Here we go. There's one. And there should be another one, but I'm not going to look around for it. Just make another one. There we go. And so I'll pr place uh, pressure plates down here. And those will act to teleport me. So when I step on this, um, basically I'll be instantly teleported to our nether port or our, our end portal over there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and dig down here. And I'll probably do this in montage. Uh, but, well, I might build the first part here. But essentially, I'm going to have it go out around our enchantment table redstone in there. And then uh, make a direct line to the end portal. I also want to have a dispenser down here that dispenses a ender pearl so that I can always have an ender pearl ready to go. But other than that, guys. Uh, I think I'm just going to go ahead and do a little montage here. And let's build the jumper. Okay, everybody, so you heard my dog up there barking. Uh, we made it here to the um, ender portal, and I'm actually right underneath the ender portal here. So there's the ender portal there. And what I want to do here is sort of map out the area. And it's kind of interesting to note that this end portal is actually on the chunk border here. So this chunk is chunk 1765. You'll see I back up into... Uh, 1665 so we need to make the central chunk here 1765 go out two chunks that way that way that way and behind us and that way uh, we can load this um, 
chunk here, the central chunk with the end portal, whenever we, um, whenever we want to. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I'm also going to build something here on the end portal to sort of suspend us above it. And then we can drop in when we, whenever we want to. And then, of course, the the uh, shoot for the end, uh, the ender pearl, upwards. So, I'll go ahead and continue to build out here. Uh, make this uh, repeater line continue to load these five by five chunks, and I'll be back. All right, so we are here at the end portal now, and uh, somehow my dog has moved in the sitting position from this spot here all the way down to this spot here. I don't know how that's even possible, but it happened. So, yeah, I got uh, some work done here. Uh, we got all the necessary wiring down beneath this area, so we can load the 5x5 chunk here and get the pearl to freeze in midair and then force load the chunk and have it fall again, uh, which is the principle of the jumper. But I made this thing too. Uh, this is based off of a video by a guy called Defanev. He made something similar to this. And it's basically a way to detect an ender pearl throw. And then you can time stuff based off of that. So let me show you how this system works. So we hit, basically what happens is we stand in the middle here. We'll hit this trap door and then launch the pearl right after that. So I'll just simulate that here. So the cart falls. That opens and then closes extremely quickly after that. And then once we come back, we'll land on these glass blocks. Hit this uh, lever here, which brings the cart up and turns off the redstone, and then put the trap door up, and then drop it back down. So, uh, yeah, the redstone behind here is pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, signal is just pulled off of here, pressure plates on that block there, and then it just goes out from there to a pulse, uh, one tick pulse limiter thing, pulse limiter. Okay, let's go ahead and try this. Uh, so we stand in the middle here, Oh, I, put, I threw three of them. And, well, that did not work quite as intended, but sure. I guess that works. Uh, we'll have to work on that, make that uh, the area where I throw it a little bit higher. But yeah, it seemed to, uh, seemed to do okay. Let's go ahead and go back into the overworld now and see exactly... Yeah, I don't think it's going to work, actually, because I think we hit the... Hit the ceiling. Yep, Minecraft credits roll. And we slept in the end portal anyway. Okay. That was actually good thinking by me. So let me go ahead and raise the roof here a little bit. Raise that up. There's that. Okay. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and raise this roof a little bit here. So here we go. Take number two. So I what I did here is I changed a couple of the uh, timings on their repeaters back here. So there's... Uh, less of a delay between when we throw the pearl and when this opens. And then I also went ahead and raised the the roof here so we don't hit that anymore. So we'll just position ourselves in the center here. About right there should be decent. And then let it fly. Okay. So I think that should be pretty good. Uh, we'll go ahead and make our way back to the overworld now. I went ahead and slept in my bed in my uh, my house in the swamp biome. So that's where we should end up, I believe. Text rolls. There we go. Sweet. It's night, so sleep again, I guess. Doesn't really make a difference, I guess. Seeing as we're going right back to where we started from. Okay. Now you'll see I have 15 ender pearls on me, and you might have noticed in that montage that I placed some dispensers under here. So when we step on these, not only should we get teleported, but we should also get an ender pearl. So let's see if that happens. Oh, uh, the, well, the dispensers must be out, but the teleporter worked. And I heard the dispensers click, but nothing came out because I didn't fill them. <laughs> okay, so yeah, this definitely working now. Uh, pretty, uh, pretty cool mechanism here. So yeah, this is going to be super useful for me. Uh, so yeah, definitely going to be a lot easier to get ender pearls and you know go back and forth to get experience at the end portal. And yeah, I don't think uh, 
throwing two like that will break it. I think it's pretty pretty resilient. <clears throat> but we'll we'll check and see here, just in case. And it actually doesn't cause a whole lot of lag, even though it is loading a lot of chunks. So we'll come back here, back here. I guess we'll go this way this time. Why not? Run down this way, past the elevator. All right. Come down over here. Yep, you heard the dispensers there. And there we go. Got teleported back. Sweet. So yeah, definitely is working now. I just got to fill those dispensers, so it'll give me an ender pearl each time. That way I won't have to worry about, uh, you know, bringing an ender pearl every time here. So, good deal. We got this up and running now. Uh, so now I say we go ahead and go back and see who today's highlighted channel is. Okay, so we'll go ahead and head down to the mine shaft now. And the way that this works is I randomly choose a comment from the previous video uh, and I highlight that channel in my mine shaft down here. So I'll just show you, come down here, here's the mine shaft. Uh, we have a leaderboard, uh, we have a points, a points based system uh, and a uh, fortune 3 diamond leaderboard as well. So the fortune 3 diamond leaderboard is simply the number of diamonds mined out of a single mine shaft. And the point system gives point totals like 40 points for diamond, uh, 20 points for iron, 15 for redstone, 10 for gold, 5 for lapis, and um, 2 for coal. And then I, uh, like I said, I highlight a channel from uh, whomever made a insightful, useful, or witty comment from the previous video. And then the best mine shafts get uh, sort of special blocks assigned to them. So this one's iron, so that was a pretty decent one there. There's some that have, you know, uh, gold blocks and diamond blocks next to them if they were particularly good. But it's a good good thing to do, I think, because, you know, it's a community and not just me playing here. Uh, other people have really good ideas, and I've implemented some of their ideas in the world. Um, so today's highlighted channel is Mick Penny. Junior 26 so Mick I'm just gonna call him Mick uh, Mick suggested in the last episode that I make a tree farm and excuse me as I suffocate myself in gravel and I think that was a pretty good idea um, an automated tree farm because the one we have now it's decent but doesn't really handle a whole lot of trees and it's kind of slow so I'm thinking maybe in one of the next few episodes here, I can uh, go ahead and do that. And so, uh, yeah, thank you, Mick, for the suggestion. This is your mine shaft. We'll see how you do against the other competitors. All right, and just so you know, uh, I do dig each mine shaft the same length and same height. So I dig three high, uh, 150 blocks long, and I only mine ores that are visible. Um, on the sides or the bottom of this thing and then all ores connected to that um, so that's how we keep it sort of fair around here and so I just finished digging out mixed mine shaft and so we got the following resources we got eight diamond uh, a bunch of iron uh, some redstone some coal and a bunch of lapis as well so I'll go ahead and head back to the, uh, the start of the mine shaft here via minecart and we'll see where he lands on the leaderboards all right, so Mick Penny Jr. coming in third place today with 3,789 points, and he also came in ninth place on the Diamond Leaderboard with eight diamonds. So pretty good mine shaft today, and I feel a pretty good episode. We got a lot done. We got the fully customizable enchantment table built, as well as the jumper, which will allow us to teleport back and forth to the end, pretty much at will. So good stuff there. Also, uh, for those of you who have been wanting a world download for a while. Um, I know I didn't do one with episode 105, but I will be doing one with this episode. So there'll be a world download in the description. So go ahead and check that out. There's a lot of cool stuff in this world and uh, more to come. So thank you all for watching, guys. This has been Cub Fan. Goodbye.